Working out your shipping fees can seem super overwhelming when you start selling online, but luckily I got you. Today I'm going to give you a 10 step process to go through so you don't miss any of the important steps when it comes to setting up the right shipping costs for your items. G'day there, welcome. My name is Jess Van Den. I've been selling online since 2008 and been doing it full time since 2010. So I have shipped a lot of things in that time and I've made the mistakes at the beginning of the process. I remember totally undercharging on shipping, messing this stuff up. So that's why today I wanted to do this video to demystify the process of calculating the shipping for every item that you sell online so that your customer is paying enough money to cover the cost and you are not undercharging or overcharging on your shipping. Okay, step one is to decide on your shipping materials. So what are you going to be wrapping the item in? What are you going to be putting the item in to send it through the post? You need to decide on this first because that will go into all the future decisions that you're going to be making because it will impact the size, the weight and the cost of the product. Okay, so the second thing is you want your product, you want to wrap it up as if you would before you put it in its shipping container and then you want to put it into that shipping container and you want to work out the uh, dimensions and the weight of that product. Okay, and you want to write that down somewhere. So you have the dimensions and you have the weight. Now, if you're not sure about working out the weight, it's good if you have like a pair, a set of kitchen scales. So there's little digital scales that can give you a really um, nice, accurate measure. If you're sending big things, then maybe just a normal pair of scales and you can like pick it up and then put it down and see what the difference is. Not as accurate, but better than nothing. You can always take it to the post office and get them to weigh it for you because they have those nice big scales. Or maybe, you know, take it to the supermarket and use the digital scales in the vegetable section of the supermarket. <laughs> Whatever works, baby. Okay, so figure out a way to work out the dimensions and the weight of your product when it's fully packed and ready to ship. Okay, step three is to calculate the total cost of all the shipping materials. So this is not just the box that it ships in. This is also potentially the um, wrapping, the ribbon, the little note card you put in there, whatever the things are that you put in there, you want to calculate the cost of all of those things per item shipped. Okay, so that might mean you need to take a bulk cost and split it up into, you know, say I bought 100 envelopes uh, and it cost me $200, then I have to split it. So that I'm like, okay, well, each envelope has actually cost me $2. So I need to incorporate that into my calculations when it comes to working out my shipping. Otherwise, I'm losing money. Okay, so we've worked out uh, what we're using to ship. We've worked out the dimensions and the weight. We've worked out the cost of the shipping materials. The fourth thing, and this is where most people start, so you're ahead of the game already if you've watched this video. The fourth thing is you go find a shipping for provider. So who are you going to use to ship your items? Uh, here in Australia, we've got Australia Post. We've got a few other options for people that they can use, like Sendall, for example. Uh, I just use Australia Post. I've been using them since I started. I'm happy with their service. So that's what I go with. Uh, your mileage may vary depending on the country you're in and depending on like, the sort of services you're looking for. So this is, you know, you have to do a bit of research here and decide what, who you want to go with. Okay, number five, once you have chosen a shipping provider, you need to look through the shipping classes that they offer. There's not just one, there's going to be multiple different options. So here in Australia, we have like track shipping, express shipping, courier, which is even faster than express. And then we have international. So we've got, um, there's, you know, sea mail, air mail, then there's uh, untracked, well, there used to be <laughs> I don't know if they bring that back uh, for letters, there's untracked. Uh, and then was tracked and then express and courier. So you have to uh, work out what those different shipping classes are. Now, see, at this point, this is where you need to know that weight and dimension thing because different shipping providers or carriers will use different things. So some shipping carriers will use the dimension of the parcel to charge you. Some will use the weight and some might use both. Okay, so you'll need these numbers to plug them into the online calculator for your shipping provider. And they should all have an online calculator that you can use. You don't need to go schlep down to the post office to talk to them about this. It should all be there. You can just plug the numbers in where it's go going from, where it's going to. So you need to do this 
if you're selling internationally, you need two lots of prices. You need the domestic prices for the different levels and you need the international prices for the different levels. Obviously, you only need to work out the prices for the ones that you're actually offering. So I don't offer Korea, for example. I just offer tracked or express shipping and I do that domestically and internationally. Now, domestically, I do a, a level of shipping that's actually free. So there's three levels I have. And then um, internationally, I have two levels, which is tracked and express. So you need to work out the cost for each of the thing, the levels of shipping that you are going to be offering in your shop. Okay, number six is to take the cost of the shipping class, whatever it is, tracked, express, and the cost of the shipping materials and put those two things together. Okay, so now you have a cost for each level or each class of shipping that covers the shipping cost itself and the materials cost that you have put together and voila, you have a shipping cost for your item, for all the classes that you're offering. Yay. But we're not finished yet. There's still a few more steps we need to go through. Number seven is the free shipping conundrum. Okay. So are you, or are you not going to offer free shipping? If you are, are you going to offer free shipping for every class of shipping or only certain classes of shipping? I'll give you an example as to what I do in my Etsy shop. So in my Etsy shop, I offer free shipping for domestic um, orders, and that is the free untracked. It's not tracked. So, okay, so it's free untracked shipping for domestic orders. Then I offer an upgrade for tracked shipping and an upgrade for express. Now to work those numbers out, obviously what I've done is I've taken the cost of the shipping domestically the, 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 the untracked level, and I've put that into my product price. Okay. So I've just taken it from the shipping and plonked it right into my product price. So my product price has increased by the amount that that untracked shipping cost. Then the tracked shipping and the express shipping is just whatever the difference was. Okay. So say my untracked shipping was $5, my tracked shipping was $7 and my express was $10. It's not, but just for argument's sake, um, so I take that $5 and I put it on my product price. Then my track shipping would be an extra $2 and my express shipping would be an extra $5 to make up the difference, right? Makes sense. And you have to do the same thing with obviously your international shipping. Now, if you're outside of, of um, the US and uh, India for some reason, you can now on Etsy do two sets of prices, which is amazing. So you can do domestic price and an international price for your item. And what that means is that you can actually offer free international shipping now without costing your domestic customers ridiculous amounts of money because the shipping cost is so different. So uh, I've done another video on that. I'll put a card to that up here that talks about the whole domestic international shipping, uh, sorry, uh, pricing thing. So if you want to check that out after you watch this, click on that, open in another tab and you can come back to it. Okay, so free shipping. Are you going to offer it if people order a certain amount of money? Uh, <laughs> Uh, are you going to offer it if people spend a certain amount of money or are you going to offer it to everybody? Are you going to offer it just domestically or are you also going to offer it internationally? So this is where you have to sit down and think through this process and it brings in your product pricing into the process. So you need to make sure that your product pricing can handle this. Now, this is obviously easier for those of us who sell higher price items because adding $5 onto a uh, I don't know, $85 thing is not a huge deal. But if you're selling cheaper items, like a couple of dollar items, this is this gets a bit tricky. And you're like, well, you know, my, my stick is $3. Can I really just whack another $5 on that and offer free shipping? Is that going to work? You know, people are going to buy it for that price. So you have to make that calculation as to whether free shipping is the right choice for your business or not. Now, if you are selling somewhere like Etsy, it's a little bit complicated by the fact that they have their free shipping guarantee that if you switch that on, which is you're offering free shipping inside the US, then you get a slight boost in the search results. So it's not huge. You know, you can definitely live without it, but that's something to consider as well in this process. So I can't tell you the answer for this one. This is up to you uh, and it depends on different people's businesses will be different. The, uh, your circumstances will be different and don't be afraid to experiment. You can always try free shipping, see if it works. And if it doesn't, you can switch it back again. 
it's okay. You can change things. <laughs> you don't have to just decide on it once and then never change it again. Okay. Number eight is a step that most people don't really think about, but I guess it's a little bit out of fashion now, but it's whether your shipping is going to be cumulative or just one cost. So what I mean by that is if somebody buys three things from your shop, are they going to have to pay the combined shipping of all three things, or are they just going to pay one shipping cost and that covers the shipping of all three things? Okay. And again, this is going to depend on your business. If you're selling uh, chairs, <laughs> chances are you can't afford to ship two chairs for the price of one. Okay. So you have to set up your shipping so that they get charged the cumulative shipping rather than just the one uh, standard shipping cost. If you sell somewhere like Etsy, again, this is a setting in your delivery profiles. Same with pretty much every other venue. You're going to be able to set this as an option as to whether you want to offer just that flat rate shipping or if you want to, or if you have to offer cumulative shipping and it's going to be different for every circumstance. And there might even be certain items in your shop where you have to add, you know, they have to have their own shipping costs because they're larger or heavier. And then there might be other items where they're lighter and you're like, yeah, I'll just, I can charge a flat rate shipping for that. So it's not necessarily a one decision for the whole shop. You might have to make different decisions to, based on different products. Okay, we're almost there. Number nine is to create your delivery profiles, or whatever it's called on the platform you use. If you're on Etsy, it's called at this time delivery profiles. So what that means is you set up your shipping profile, delivery profile, and you put all of the, you enter all of these numbers in, um, and you can make more than one of these, and then you can just when you set up a new listing, a new product listing, you can choose from the delivery profiles. So for example, you might have one delivery profile that has that flat rate shipping and you might have another one that has like cumulative shipping. Okay. And again, you might have different delivery profiles for different classes of products that are different sizes and things like that. My shop's really easy because all my stuff's pretty much the same size and the same weight, at least, you know, it's under a certain amount, so it's fine. Uh, you know, shipping uh, companies usually charge in increments. So as long as stuff fits within one increment, say under 500 grams or under a kilogram or whatever it might be, or pounds <laughs> or ounces, that's what you US people use, right? Um, so then that's, you know, you just make sure it fits in that band, basically. So you've got to set all that up in your shop for the products. Okay. So remember you've got those domestic levels, you've got those international levels, then you choose is it flat rate or not, and boom, you've got your delivery profile and it's ready to apply to your product. And number 10, you apply it. <laughs> you apply the delivery profile to each appropriate product and you have set up your shipping for your product. So of course you have to set up shipping again, like I said, for every product, but if you're like me and all your products are about the same height and weight, they ship in the same thing. It's really easy because you just do this once and then apply it to everything. If you have those multiple options, a little bit more work, you're going to have to apply it depending on the, the weight and the, the dimensions of your shipping uh, container, vessel, envelope, box, whatever it might be. But you get the idea. So if you follow this process, then you are going to make sure that you cover all of your costs properly. You're charging the appropriate amount to cover your shipping costs and your materials costs. Don't forget the shipping materials. People always forget that and they're losing money on it. And then you're deciding whether to roll it into your, your uh, price or not. Look, another trick with that is to roll part of it in. You know, if you're like, well, my base level of shipping is like $25, which it is for me for domestic, uh, for international shipping. Okay. You can go, well, okay. Am I going to roll the whole lot of that into my product price or am I going to do partial price? So that means, okay, I put $10 into my product price and then I charge the extra 15 as shipping. So the shipping doesn't look quite as expensive. Okay. So you're kind of playing that psychological game here of what's going to, what's going to get you the, the sale, you know, is it having the free shipping with a high product cost, or is it going to be having a lower product cost so that it looks more competitive price wise, and then, um, a higher shipping cost that they don't see till they get to the checkout. Okay. So those are all the decisions you have to make and different things work for different people and possibly at different times too. So again, like I said, don't be afraid to experiment with this 
and over time you'll start to figure out what is the best solution for you but the most important thing is that you're charging that money to your customer so you are not losing profit by not charging the right amount for your shipping I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe if you want to catch my next videos on how to have a thriving and profitable handmade business. Now, if money and prices and the maths is the part that you don't like and you need some help with your pricing, I have a video for you right here that will give you a basic formula for pricing your handmade products. And it explains every part of the formula and why it's there so you understand what goes into the pricing process. I hope that helps you out. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.